Okay, I've released a resource we first produced in 2010, I think it was, to, to give an overview of the entire OER, Open Education Resource create, Creation Pipeline. So this is on our Sickle Cell Open website, our Scooter Project website, so you can see the URL. If you go to search our resources, um, of course there's a number of resources relating to the science and health aspects of sickle cell but we've also got a lot of training materials for people getting started in OER so what you want is the production pipeline click link to resources and what there is here is interactive HTML and here we are everything you need to know about creating uh, or repurpos re repurposing existing content for the production of OER so it involves and brings in lots of information from other expert groups, from the GISC OER Info Kit, from the web to rights Limited Team, the Reusable Learning Object Centre for Excellence in Learning and Teaching, the RLO Cattle, the Open University School Group, um, and this, this really, really does have everything you need to know. So first of all, if you were um, looking for forms and contracts for people to be working on OER with you, the first link takes you through to the web to rights website. So there's everything legal you need to know there. It's an astonishing resource. Um, the next step is then thinking, well, do I have existing content? Do I have some PowerPoints already that might just need checking? Or are we developing from scratch? If so, these RLO Kettle specification forms would help. Number two is just a simple specif specification check. And uh, number three is a full specification. So it really goes into the details of what the OER content will be, where the media and assets are coming from and who's involved in the work. Um, and number four, five and six really are the legal aspects that you may need to consider. So four, again, linking through to some of the GISC information is providing you with open education resource copyright forms and permissions forms, consents to photograph people, to use other people's recordings and media. And number six is really fantastic. This came out of the medical um, subject centre, the HEA subject centre, um, and some really talented people there got their heads round the additional things to consider if you were using patient material. So some of the ethics you might need to think about gaining patient consent for using information and data. So that that is a really vital step if you're involved in health or medical OER. Um, the GISC Open Education Resource toolkits and GISC websites talk you through some of the technology standards that they recommended, how to make resources accessible, use of metadata tagging and RSS is important on projects today because that will help you get your OERs um, aggregated onto some of the other services such as Expert or Solvenaut. So do, do look into the RSS feature. And then really we're assuming you're ready to go with your OER and um, there's a series of checklists. Now I think this is quite nice from the Open University Score group. Really just a simple two-pager to step you through all this other information to make sure your OER is in fact of good quality and ready to go. If you're interested into it in a bit more in-depth evaluation. The RLO Kettle has further questions, interview frameworks to start evaluating your OER and its potential impact. And then hurrah, you've released your materials. Um, I've talked about in number nine, this is one of our own resources, dispersing OB OER on the web. I mean, Google is just the best repository and the web is the best repository in search engine, isn't it? And I would recommend releasing your OER in two spaces. So if one goes down, there's an element of security in that your OER will last somewhere else. Um, and this talks about how to use social media and other really simple ideas to get your OER dispersed and discovered. And then last but not least, really a lot of great work coming out at the moment from the Open University, the OER Research Hub, and quite a lot of research from around the globe now looking at the longer lasting sustainability and impact that OER is having on, on learning and education more globally. And on there, there's links to ethics information and again, further types of questionnaires and resources. So there you are, our OER pipeline. Hope you go and have fun with it.